All right, so today's progress was getting the side stripping off and starting to separate the top from the bottom. So you see we have our seam here and we've split the seam. Sort of see some light going through it. And we split the seam all the way around to the transom, right where the transom meets uh, this piece. They've done some glassing on the inside to hold this well to the transom. So you can see right there. So we'll have to cut that separately, but it looks like that was the only other area that they glassed to hold the, the top onto the bottom. Of course, um, I can do the back bit on my own, removing the trim and splitting the tub, but the front portion, I can't get on my own. I need two people. One person to hold the screwdriver on the outside, other person to be inside. Um, when I put everything back, they used aluminum hardware, which is nice because it doesn't corrode uh, forever. But the problem is it does corrode and all the bolts are breaking. So it's actually difficult to get them off. So we're gonna do some short uh, stainless steel hardware with uh, nylock nuts more than likely, just so that these trims stay on because in fact, right here on the edge, you can see where it actually pulled through the trim piece. So you can see that enlarged hole. So we'll have to use a washer or even just do the bottom one. What's interesting is there's a lot more holes in the aluminum trim to attach it than there are bolts. So they, they don't use all the hardware, which, you know, that's surprising. You would think from this era boat that they would they would build it right. They would do everything that it was designed to do. So, unfortunate, but no big deal. When we put it back, we can put it back right. <clears throat> uh, we cut open the bottom just to see just how bad it was. Luckily, our runners are um, fiberglass, and it's a heavy woven fiberglass. We'll just essentially re-clean it, sandblast, or not sandblast, but uh, uh, pressure wash and then we'll coat it back one more time with a new coat just to stiffen it up a little um, and then of course the floor is just lost all of its integrity because that's the wood there's nothing left of it it's just turned into mush which there's water of, luckily the um, the transom was sealed but when we opened it up, took all the bolts out, took the motor off, all that fun stuff, you'll see all this water is actually dripping out of the transom itself, which means that the transom's full of water and that wood in there is toast. So hopefully it's in one piece. If the transom still is, the wood is, we'll be able to remake the same transom and then put it back in and um, seal it back up the same way they would have done factory this one's a little bit easier than a lot because the top is actually a cap so this caps over um the back piece now obviously the damage there was no top plate the motor was just bolted right onto the fiberglass you can see the the where the bolts went through for the mounts which i guess is okay but i don't know why somebody wouldn't have done just a giant stainless steel plate on the back because that would ensure longevity of the boat. So, not sure. Um, along with that, we've got our uh, rails. This trailer not made for this boat, so you see that it's not even riding on the, the rollers. So we're gonna buy up some roller brackets. There's actually some non-used ones on here, so we're gonna pull all those roller brackets off, buy ourselves some V-rollers, and get the trailer to hold the boat properly. I've got it cribbed up with a bit of uh, wood cribbing just to hold it so I can lay inside of it. All in all, progress is coming really fast with it. Um, I'm absolutely loving this boat style. I, I looked forever and ever to find a boat like this and finally found one in the absolute pennies budget that I had. And luckily this one is all elbow grease. Not a lot of money that needs to be thrown at it. Mainly just fiberglass and wood. Um, and elbow, lots and lots of elbow grease. So we'll get rocking and rolling. Stay tuned for the next episode.